The Institute for Justice is a public interest litigation firm. And what that means is that we sue the government. And we, thank you. And we sue the government at, without charging our clients any money. Uh, we represented Suzette Kilo, a nurse in New London who is married to a disabled fellow. Suzette works two, sometimes three jobs, bought her house about eight years ago and fixed it up. But yet the city of New London uh, wanted to take it uh, f for park support. They didn't even have an idea what it was that they were going to use Suzette's property for. Additionally, it was our pleasure at the Institute for Justice to represent the Cristofaro family. Grandma, Grandma Cristofaro was born in that house where she lives in New London in 1906 and knows no other house. Her, her father emigrated and settled in that, the Trumbull neighborhood in New London in the 1880s. The Cristofaros have lived nowhere else but New London, but that will soon change. The frustration that we have about this decision and about uh, taking em using eminent domain for private development is that it contradicts the limit that is explicitly stated in the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The limit is that any project must be for public use. We believe, and I think you believe, that public use means a road, a bridge, a, a post office, a courthouse, something that the public uses, something that the public owns, something that the public has access uh, to. But the court this week expanded that limit for some states, some states who want to fall down to the level of protection that the federal constitution offers, to and that level now includes private economic development. As Sandra Day O'Connor said in her dissent, now a Ritz-Carlton, a Motel 6 can be taken for a Ritz-Carlton just if the city planners want it. The majority opinion gives deference to states and to legislatures. But this is odd. It's odd particularly for liberals to talk about deference as it relates to, to constitutional rights. We do not subject other constitutional rights to majoritarian approval. In essence, the Constitution is a counter-majoritarian tool that is supposed to limit legislators and municipalities. But despite all this doom and gloom, there is actually some cause for optimism. And what I'd like to do is just read a couple of sentences, and then I'd be happy to take your, your questions about the de decision. There is optimism for a number of reasons. One, that the case from the 1950s, Berman, was decided nine to zero. That empowered municipalities to take property under the guise of blight or being next to blight. The case of Midkiff in the 1980s that empowered the state of Hawaii to transfer ownership on leased property uh, was decided nine to zero. The trend is moving in our favor. This case was decided five to four, and the public awareness is, and public support is definitely on the side of the four. Now, jumping into the text, particularly for those who are from Minnesota, Kansas, Maryland, New York, North Dakota, and Connecticut. Justice Kennedy has given us a test, has raised the floor in those states on, on uh, taking it, using eminent domain for private transfers. And some of this will ring true to you as a higher test for Minnesota, especially those who drove by the Best Buy World Headquarters on the way to this morning's meeting. What Kennedy has said is that the transfers intended to confer benefits on particular favored private entities 
and with only incidental or pretextual public benefits are forbidden by the public use clause. You cannot take land from Wally McCarthy, from the Walzer auto, auto dealership, and from the 70 homeowners in Richfield and transfer it to Best Buy Corporation under this new, new test. Secondly, Kennedy said, a court should strike down a taking that, by a clear showing, is intended to favor a particular private party with only incidental and textual, pretextual public benefits. Once again, Best Buy does not pass that, pass that test. So, although we are frustrated by this decision, my colleagues and I, my colleagues at the Institute for Justice and I will continue the, the fight. In fact, we're planning a rally in New London over the weekend of July 4th, and there's even talk of asking people to mail their house keys to the mayor of the city of New London from across the, the country. More, more to come about, about that.